I don't care what anyone says. I'm keeping my hair parted on the side. That's just how it's gonna go. Hello everyone, I'm Monica and welcome back to my channel Mooney Reads where I talk about books and things. And today I decided to do <laughs> my June wrap up. I know I say June in this whole wrap up. Don't ask me why. It's July. It was a July wrap up. So every time I say June, just pretend I say July. Thank you. This has been brought to you by Editing Monica. I know I said to uh, you know to tell me if you want to do, but then I was like, you know, I haven't talked about this book and I haven't talked about that book, and there are just some books that I haven't talked about. Some of them I have talked about, and just as a reminder, I did read 18 books, but there's one of them that I'm not gonna talk about because that's gonna be coming up in a vlog, and I'll include that one in my July wrap up if that makes any sense. I read it the 30th. I didn't think I was gonna finish it. So I'm just gonna start taking books off this pile and then, should I do that? I don't know if I should do that. You know what? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go in order in which I read them. I think that's a, be that's a better idea. As you can see, most of them were sitting here. <laughs> I had to... I had to reorganize my shelves so they're all stacked like this, or at least most of them are because there's just no space. Because I read a lot and I buy a lot of books. Trying to buy less, but you know how it goes. So the first book that I read in June was Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo, and it seems like it was eons ago. Now, Shadow and Bone by Leigh Bardugo tells the story of this girl that was raised in the orphanage in this world where there's this there's magic and some people can do magic and they're called the Grishas, and I'm sure you know what it's about. There's the TV show on it. I don't know, but you know. I gave this book four stars purely out of the fact that I enjoyed it a lot. I have a whole video about it. I'll link it up here. It was just an enjoyable book. You know, it was funny and it was inconsequential and I had a good time reading it and it took me out of my reading slump. So that's good. The next two books I read uh, were the, um, uh, what are they called? The, ma the mangas for, what are they called in English? The Girl from the Other Side, I read volume 3 and volume 4. I can't really get into much about what happens in these volumes because of course I will be spoiling the whole series. But just know that um, this is a, man a manga, is it manga? Manga? I don't know. Manga. I'm gonna say manga. It's a manga about a little girl who is lost in the forest and this, they, and they live like in the outskirts like they live late in the what is that called i know when the word in spanish is lindel but it, i don't know the word in english for where you're like in the edge of the forest you live like in the edge of the forest and there's this um curse there's this curse and anybody that's touched by one of these creatures gets cursed and turns into one of those creatures and they don't have any memories from their past or anything like that and this one creature finds this little girl and he's um, basically sworn to protect her and make sure that she doesn't get, why can't I talk to it? and to make sure that she doesn't get the curse so she can't touch him but they're friends so I read those two after that I read Satellite by Nick Lake now I know that if you didn't watch my soft sci-fi recommendations which again I will link up here you don't know anything about this book which is a damn shame because this book is amazing this book tells the story of Leo Leo it was born on a space station and um, along with twins Libra and Orion and the whole point of this book is that once they turn 16, their bodies will be strong enough to return to Earth. Of course, they do a lot of, you know, training so that their bone density is good enough to return to Earth. Um, but things don't go as expected. This book is incredible. This book is amazing. There is only one problem with this book. And this book is written in text speak. I have talked about this before. It it's really hard to read at first because like i think yeah I, I talked about it in a vlog it's like hard when you see instead of i see you it's literally the letters i see and you and it's really annoying but in the end this book packs 
quite a punch it deals with a lot of things it deals with grief it deals with um finding your sexuality it deals with falling in love with someone that cannot love you back because of their sexuality and it just deals with a bunch of beautiful um just oh feels <laughs> it deals with a bunch of beautiful feels there's a uh neurodivergent woman in here there is a, a representation for homosexuality everybody is of different ethnic backgrounds this book just has it all and i cannot believe it's more it's not more famous than book two. well i guess i can because of the text speak thing it does have a reason for it but it's like the very end of the book and you've been reading it for a while and you're like oh that's why but I love I love this quote from it and I'm just gonna read it to you it says I love like the moon loves the earth I just love that it's so good I highly recommend that you read this book by Nick Lake and speaking of Nick Lake next up I picked up nowhere on earth also by Nick Lake this is also a soft sci-fi where we have a young girl who finds an alien in the woods behind her house she just was what was talking to her parents um she has a lot of problems with her parents her parents are like survivalist outdoorsy people and she wants to be a ballerina and they move to alaska she's really unhappy there the, the little town that they live in doesn't even have a dance studio so she can't dance and well she finds this alien and she decides well she decides no they both decide because he can't survive on earth much longer he they decide to basically sneak away on an airplane that brings you know provision provisions is that how you say that i'm gonna say it like that that brings food and stuff to the to the town and make it to this radio station thing place where they experiment with radio waves and sending them to space so he can get home it's such a lovely comforting read it's a lot of survival in nature but um every character in here is amazing the main protagonist i i feel i feel for her because i've been there i've been that misunderstood girl by her parents who doesn't even understand how much her parents love her and how much they try to give her everything there's a there's a quote in here where it's like they tried to give me everything i needed but what if what i needed is not what they could afford or something like that it was it's just it's such a beautiful 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 book and it has all the et stranger things vibes that i'm like mm, looking for and it's wonderful please pick up nowhere on earth by nick lake of course i gave five out of five stars and five out of five stars and i gave the girl from the other side mangas each four out of four, five stars then i read a book that i thought was gonna be like really sweet and and just <laughs> gentle and like wonderful which is girl boy c uh by chris fix this girl boy c tells the story of the main protagonist is his name also leo no it's bill bill uh basically is a affluent english man not man boy he's a boy who is on a yacht not yacht is it a yacht i think it's a yacht well he's sailing you know they told him it was a good idea his parents were like it's a good idea for you to go sailing this summer uh off the coast of ibiza and he's shipwrecked and he's left alone until he finds another person a girl who is shipped here we go the girl <laughs> who is shipwrecked also and they're trying to survive together and then from there on out this book gets graphic gets intense there is extreme violence that happens <laughs> this is not a sweet gentle read my friends this is not a comforting read at all um it's actually really poignant and really strong i gave i think i gave it four out of five stars because there is i i would have given it the whole five stars but there is a trope in here which is one of my least favorite tropes in anything literature movies any entertainment that you can think of which is there's apparently the shark that is following them getting ready to eat them and sharks don't fucking do that like that's not how the sharks behave and i dislike it when they do that when they pretend that that's how sharks behave because that just 
leads to people being scared of sharks and thinking they're these big bad sea monsters when really they're just more scared of us than we are of them. I, I don't know if that's true because I haven't talked to a shark but every, every survivalist out there will tell you a shark will most likely not do anything to you if you know what to do and it will probably just bite and go because they don't like to eat humans although you know a shark bite will probably kill you but but anyway uh four out of five stars uh would i recommend this book yes if you're a fucking adult this is not middle grade i don't know who said this was middle grade this is fiction children's i would not give this to a child there is a literal scene where they describe in detail how they kill a turtle it's really mm, it's really intense i don't know i would i personally think that this is for adults and i think this is like a life of pie but with kids so that's my rant <laughs> on this book and i think this is the book that i most wanted to make this video for because i'm like Nobody's gonna know that I read Girl Boy C and that they should be careful <laughs> with going into it. So that's um, Girl Boy C by Chris Fix. It's actually really well written and it's really beautiful, but um, it's not the sweet, gentle story that I thought it was gonna be. The next books, I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly because you, if you saw my um, Goodreads catch up vlog, then you saw me talk about them. The next book I read is Ambassador by William Alexander. Um, I didn't know this was the National Book Award winning author of the Goblin series. Hmm. But this is a story about the child of two undocumented American immigrants and he so happens to find an alien. And this alien is like, hey, now you're the ambassador of Earth. And during this book, um, we find out that um, Gabe's parents are going to probably be deported and meanwhile this is going on there's like a black hole in the basement and like um, he has to meet with other representatives of other planets which are usually children because the idea is that when you're a child you're more likely more open-minded to these whole like ex alien experiences that when you're an adult um this book was okay I really like one of the planets which is like an eater of worlds but he also has a representative in this embassy of planets uh but he tries to stay away from people because the more he knows about the planets the more he's like willing to use that information to eat that world and that part was really interesting i just thought this was on the lower end of middle grade for me and um i wish there had been more of this book i wish it would have been more YA or even adult um, fantasy, not fantasy, sci-fi, but it's really good for children. If you've got kids, this is a really good sci-fi, and it's not it's not scary. And the <laughs> the alien in here is one of the absolutely cutest things that I've ever seen. It's like a they describe it like a sock puppet, but it's purple, and it imitates voices of people you know so that you feel comfortable. And I just thought that, that was really sweet. I don't really have a lot to say about this book. I gave it three stars because it just wasn't to my taste, but I think if I was a lot younger, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. And I do like what it has to say about um, immigration and undocumented citizens, so. Next up, I read my absolute worst read of the month, which was Low. I'm not gonna say the names of the authors. I think you can see them there. There you go. I'm not going to say them because I always butcher them. I don't even know what to tell you about this graphic comic, except that it's about humans destroy Earth and they go underwater and they're running out of oxygen. And the rest is just a lot of shenanigans and shit. And, and there's this, this, this like, I don't know how to explain it. I don't, I don't even know what happened. I gave it two stars. I'm sorry. I just don't know how to explain what happened. Um, the illustrations are very beautiful. The coloring is superb. But I didn't like it. There's like a, a cult. And there is like the force. And, and, and bad things. Just It's just bad things all over the place. Anything bad that can happen will happen in this story. So if you're up to that, be my guest. 
Next up, I read Articulated Restraint by Mary Robinette Kowalt. Now, this is a short story based in her These Calculating Stars series. And this is basically something that happens in these calculating starts, but it's just like a sentence and in this we see the actual um, event taking place. I really liked it. It's about a woman that sprains her ankle, but she has to do this exercise in order to get the to save these astronauts that are stuck in space. And yeah, she has to push through the pain. What I really liked about this novel was the um, discussion of how women have to work harder than men to get exactly to where men are and how we feel that we cannot complain about our pain, we cannot say anything about our pain because that alone makes us weak and I just really liked it and it made me very interested in reading these calculating stars. The next book I read was The Magnificent Monsters of Cedar Street by Lauren Oliver. I gave this a 3.5 stars. This was okay. This is the story of a young woman, of a young woman, of a young girl named Cordelia. Cordelia and her father are basically veterinarians for monsters. The problem is money is tight because her father also is a normal veterinarian but he just doesn't have time to dedicate himself to that practice when he has monsters all over the house and he has to keep them hidden because people will just freak out and then one day cordelia wakes up and her father and all of the monsters are gone and she goes on this epic adventure to find the monsters this was cute but I just think this could have been so much better. That's that's the problem. I just think that this could have been a better story. There was a lot of those ex machina happening, like a lot. Like there's a, there's a point where I was like, this is just getting ridiculous at this point. It's really sweet though. I I I like the character except that she's like the stereotype of not like other girls character. And yeah, I mean it's sweet, but. It's it's not it hasn't it, it wasn't what I needed and it wasn't the best book that I read during the month. That's it. That's all I gotta say for you. The next book I read is and I'm gonna get it right this time. The Nocturnal Brain: Nightmares, Neuroscience, and the Secret World of Sleep by Guy Lesk Legziner. Legz Le 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 you know. There you go. There's the picture. I'm not going to say the, the last name right. I'm sorry. This basically is a nonfiction book talking about sleep and the problems with sleep and how we can solve them and how we can arrive actually to a diagnosis. There we go. To a diagnosis. I gave this book a 3.75 four stars because honestly I felt that it was relying too heavily on the scientific jargon and not so much on the personal experience. There is plenty of the personal experiences, but I just felt like I was reading a thesis dissertation instead of reading a book for most of this book. So I just didn't enjoy it that much because of it. But I still, I still thought it was interesting. It reignited my love for nonfiction. I'm planning on doing a nonfiction vlog. There you go. That's a little bit of a spoiler, but it doesn't matter. And yeah, there's not much I can say. I mean, they talk about different kinds of sleep disorders. I like how he takes a very clinical view of them. I like how he explains things. What I didn't like was that a lot of his patients are, of course, older. And not all of them, but a lot of them. And the, the sleep disorder that I personally struggle with got the shortest chapter in the book so I was really looking forward to learning more about my own sleep disorder and in the end I just was left wanting. The next book I read was The Final Six by Alexandra Moner. Now in the beginning I was like this is such a silly book like I, I don't understand why this is so um, highly praised and then I finished reading it and I by the end of it I fell in love with it I love the romance even though you're you're quite sure from the beginning that the two characters are gonna get together the romance is actually drawn out throughout the book I love the twist ending and I love everything about this except that they're teenagers why are we sending teenagers to space I know the whole thing is like 
they're younger so by the time they get there they're not gonna be so old but then they get there like in three days so i don't understand why we couldn't have just sent 24 year olds but yeah this is like i said a story about sending um teenagers to space we have destroyed the world as we do in science fiction uh there's a lot of climate change talk in here and basically the world has flooded and we pick 24 of the brightest teenagers and then out of those 24 six are chosen to go to europa which is one of the moons of jupiter that is said to be able to maintain life and mostly what we follow here is like kind of conspiracy like what is really going on why are they doing certain things and why did, are we the ones that were picked and it's really interesting i i found the the intrigue in this book really good i gave it five out of five stars i really loved it and i picked up right away the sequel the life below now let's talk about the life below Oh, I didn't mention that this has a really cool protagonist because she's Iranian American and that is really awesome and um, there is people from all over the world participating in this program so that's really cool. The second book however, I gave it 5 out of 5 stars but I'll be honest, it was a bit of a letdown. I gave it 5 out of 5 stars because I thought this was book 2 in a trilogy. But it turns out that no, this is not book two in a trilogy. This is a book two in a duology. And um, I have questions that were left unanswered. I originally gave this five out of five stars, but I'm gonna dock a star because I just have so many questions that were left unanswered. Also, I think that the bad guy in this book is really obvious and, and the same in the first one, but you know. It's fun to hate on America and super American patriotism, so um, yeah, I mean, I still loved it. I still want to have it, so I guess I got yeah, four, four out of five stars. I can't tell you much about this without spoiling the other book, but let's just say that um, uh, things in Europa are not what they seem. Then I read The Galaxy and the Ground Within by Becky Chambers. Now this book is, I can't with Becky Chambers, she just knows how to get to me. I was talking about how this book is the only book in the Wayfair series that does not feature a uh, human in any way in its story and that led me to be a little bit uh, confused in the beginning. I don't know if confused is the right word but I just wasn't feeling it in the beginning. But in true Becky Chambers passion, she basically led me to enjoy this book fully, wholeheartedly, and without any, like, uh, I just, I loved, I loved this book. This book is the story of a few aliens that get stranded on, like, a alien, like, bus station, I guess, you know, like, those stations where, like, where your trucks are and, you know, you get some food and stuff like that. And we have met one of these aliens before. I don't want to spoil you who it is, but we have met one of these aliens before and um, they're all trying to get to different places. There's really no plot here. It's just kind of how you how you tra traverse cultural differences when they're so big as to be galaxies apart. And I just think Becky Chambers touches on some really interesting topics. I really, really, really enjoyed this book. And I think that anybody that reads the Wayfarer series will enjoy it too. We get, like I said, we get a, a nod to a character we've previously seen before. And I just really liked reading from their point of view. Like their personality is seen more and more here and that is really enjoyable i just loved it and i cried because oh, vicky chambers always makes me cry oh my god and uh yeah i loved it i loved everything about it it's just the story of these people being stuck in a place where they don't want to be stuck and they need to get to places they need to make some hard decisions there is a lot of discussion of women's reproductive rights in this book which i think is beautiful and i just love this book and i recommend that everybody pick it up 
I, I just recommend that everybody pick up the Wayfarer series. Please do it because it's so amazing. The next book that I picked up, I picked as my favorite book of the whole catching up with my <laughs> Goodreads reading goal. And that is Orbiting Jupiter by Gary Beach Smith. Now this book, I can't get it out of my head. It's so, so good and it's so small. This book tells the story about Joseph. Joseph is in the foster care system because he apparently tried to kill a teacher and he went to a like, I don't know, reform school and now he's in the foster care system. And he um, is paired with a family that owns a farm and that has another boy. His name is actually Jackson. It's Jackson. It's Jackson and they call him Jack. And he calls him Jackie. And I think this is just heartbreaking. It's it's it, it captures you from the first moment. I like that it doesn't it doesn't like rely on Joseph's sad backstory to draw you in. It just relies on a lot of interesting and wonderful dynamics with his fam with his new family you see him flourish you see him grow and um oh i didn't mention he has a daughter he's 14 but he has a daughter her name is jupiter and all he wants to do is see her he knows he can't be a father to her but he wants to see her because his girlfriend dies during childbirth and it's all that he has left of her and he just wants to see her and social workers are working to get that done for him because he really is a good boy. He's a good boy. Yeah. He's a good he's a good guy that got caught up in some bad stuff that happened and it's a heartbreaking tale. The ending had me sobbing. I just I love this book. I absolutely love this book. It's the inside line is just black. Um, and I like the idea of forming a bond with someone who doesn't necessarily want a bond, but how sometimes reaching out a hand to somebody that really needs it is all you need, you know? I just love this book. I think this is my favorite book that I've read this entire month. And that's counting satellite and nowhere on earth. Like, that's, that's a lot. Finally, the last book that I read this month is The Seep by Tiana Porter. And I gave that, oh, if you don't haven't figured it out, I gave this five out of five stars. But I gave The Seep by Tiana Porter two out of five stars. I felt it was pretentious. I felt it was, I don't know. I just didn't like it. I didn't like it. It was weird, which is strange because you'd think that I would like it because I like Annihilation and Born, but I just don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know what to say. This is a story about an alien invasion. This alien invasion basically makes it so death, capitalism, all of these horrible things about humanity are gone. Like you can be reborn if you want, but you don't have to die. You can also change your physical appearance to appear more like a dog or a cat or a bird. And you just the idea is that you only have good feelings you only have good feelings except that the main character a trans woman by the way her wife decides that she wants to go back and be a baby and she's all like you should be the mother to me and of course the main character is like no i don't want that and then there's this whole fall into alcoholism and extreme grief and i just didn't like it i didn't like it and then the seep just goes a little bit crazy and uh, i don't know i don't know i didn't i didn't understand half of it and i didn't like the other half so i gave it two out of five stars and that is the second to last book that i finished this month like i said the last book i will wrap up next month and that was actually a really fast wrap up and I didn't get angry. Did you notice that I was like really calm during this whole wrap up? It's because I read a bunch of books that I actually liked. Can you imagine that being a thing? 
So I think this was my best reading month. No, I don't think so. I mean, I had read 14 books before this and I read 18 books. I think I didn't read 18 books. I think I DNF'd one book and that's number 18, but it's stuck back here and I don't know if I can get it. Here it is. I DNF'd The, uh, the Marrow Thieves by uh, Cherie de Moline. I just, this book and I weren't jiving, so I DNF'd it. So yeah. That's everything I read in June. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts down below and let me know what you read down below. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps my channel out. It really helps me keep making content. And yeah, without any further ado, I bid you adieu and I will see you all in another galaxy far, far away. Bye.